In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the most realistic looking characters possible with Flux using the ultra real fine tuned Flux model. With this model, you can generate highly photorealistic images, not just portraits of people, but also environments and animals. For example, I used the ultra real fine tuned Flux model together with the LoRa created by Dan Rissi to make this short video of a military cat. I generated the images using the ultra real fine tuned Flux model with the Samsung ultra real LoRa. And then I used Kling AI and the 1 2.1 model to turn them into a video using the image to video. Using this highly realistic flux model and the image to video, I think you can create a lot of different viral contents for shorts and TikTok videos. The ultra real fine tuned model is built on top of the flux def base model and brings some strong improvement. It creates very sharp textures and more balanced lighting for a more realistic look. And the hands and the feet are much better in this fine tuned model than the original flux def model. The model was trained on an expanded data set of 1800 images covering a range of styles and lighting setups to increase versatility. The author of this model also recommends using this with the LoRa's and you can find all the LoRa's under the Don Rissi's profile in civit.ai page. On the page, I've included all the download links for the model used in this specific setup in case you want to run it locally. And I'll also guide you through how to run this workflow in the cloud if you don't have a GPU locally. If you prefer to run this workflow in the cloud, I've also set up a RunPod template for you, which is useful if you don't have a local machine. It might be a bit tricky to get the ROM pod template working when you're just starting out. So I'll begin this video by setting up the pod and running the workflow to help you get started. Learning how to use RunPod for a comfy UI is by far the cheapest way to run comfy UI in the cloud if you don't have a local machine ready. For example, generating the same image on Civit AI would cost around 100 bucks per generation using this model. Since it costs about $5 to charge 5,000 bucks. that works out to roughly 10 cents per each generation of the image, which can add up quickly. And the cost is very similar for other platforms as well. Plus the workflow on Civit AI isn't very customizable in contrast with RunPod, it costs around 40 cents per hour to rent a GPU and each generation for this workflow costs less than 30 seconds. This means you can freely experiment with your workflow and generate as many images as you want during the rental period. When you log into RunPod and go to the dashboard, you'll see a menu on the left. To start an environment for a comfy UI, click on Pods and once you're there, you'll see different types of GPUs to choose from. I recommend the 3090 GPU which costs around 43 cents per hour but you can also choose the A5000 which is a lot more budget friendly option at 25 cents per hour. Both have the same amount of VRAM but the 3090 is slightly faster in terms of raw compute power and generation speed due to higher T-flops and memory bandwidth. With that being said, both GPUs are perfectly capable of running the workflow so you can go with the cheaper A5000 if you prefer. Make sure to have at least $10 in your ROMPOD balance, that's the minimum deposit required to use the service. After you click on the pod, you'll be prompted to choose a template to deploy. Think of templates as a software packages that are automatically installed when the pod starts. For this video's workflow, type AI or bust. In the template search bar, if you don't see the correct template appear, you can click the RunPod template link in the YouTube description below that I put to go directly to the pod. Then just click deploy and select your hardware. Once you deploy the RunPod, the container will initialize. This means it will begin installing Comfy UI and all the required infrastructure to run the program. After it starts, it'll also begin downloading the models needed for the work. You can monitor the download progress by clicking the logs button here. It usually takes about five minutes for everything to download, including the guff models, clip models, and the LoRa model used for the workflow. After all the models are downloaded, the container will automatically launch Comfy UI and install the necessary custom nodes. This part also takes a bit of time. When all the models are downloaded and Comfy UI launches successfully, you'll see a message that says HTTP port 3001 ready. When you click the button, when it's ready, you'll be redirected to the Comfy UI in the browser. Once you're in the Comfy UI browser, you can drag and drop the workflow file I've linked below in the canvas. To quickly walk through the workflow, this Comfy UI setup is designed to generate realistic AI images based on a text prompt using a LoRa model called Samsung Ultra Real. The unit loader guff node loads the base model ultra real fine tune v4.guff. You can find this model on the Civit AI page. 
On the model page, there is a right hand side and look for the file section where different versions of the models are available. The one I'm using is the pruned FP16 model. It delivers nearly identical quality to the full version but at half the size, meaning it uses less VRAM and this is also the version I've included in the RunPod setup. If your local VRAM is limited, you can instead download the FP8 or FP8 pruned version, which are more lightweight. In the LoRa loader, we're using the Samsung Ultra Real LoRa model, which you can find on the profile page of Dan Risi, which is the original author. For the sampler, we're using the DPM++ 2M with 40 steps, which is what the author also recommends. This is a diffusion sampler that guides how the model denoises the latent image step by step. It helps generate highly detailed and clean results, especially with photorealistic or fine-tuned models like this ultra real model. Now I'm going to go ahead and try running the workflow with some other examples. For this Samsung LoRa model, this is the keyword that you have to put as part of the prompt. As a first generation, I'm going to put a close-up of an orange tabby cat with bright green eyes wearing a tiny military helmet. And after the generation completes, this is the result that I got. The resulting image is highly realistic and is very good in terms of following the prompt. And in similar ways, I was able to create a lot of different images of this cat for the video. When prompting, I would recommend you to use a comma separator phrases for the best results as also suggested by the author. And this time, instead of a cat, I'm going to try generating female with blonde hair. I added nighttime as part of the prompt and also a keyword that says taking a selfie. And indeed, the result is extremely good and highly realistic. When using the model, I don't get the plastic look of a skin that I usually get when I use the flux def model. And this time I said an Asian girl taking a selfie and I also got a very realistic and a good result here. And this time I wanted to create a highly realistic image of a deer in a train and this was the result that I got. You can see that the chair is a little bit deformed but the overall look of the image is really good and the image is highly realistic. Then generate an image of a Russian girl holding a subscribe for more sign and this is the result that I got. You can see the overall look of the skin is very realistic and the hands that are holding the sign are very natural as well. If you don't want the aspect ratio to be in portrait mode, you can go to the flux resolution calc node and change the aspect ratio here. I'm going to try generating an image of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And this is the resulting image of the same prompt. Zooming into the image, I'm highly impressed by the realism of the skin here. You don't get the usual plastic look of the skin and the textures are really good here. I've also went ahead and downloaded the Greenscape Ultra Real and the 2000s Analog Core LoRa model and put both of these models under the LoRa folder. I'm going to be testing out these two LoRa models and compare them to the Samsung Cam Ultra Real LoRa model. For the prompt, I'm going to be using this text with the reddish brown hair pulled back holding a signed subscribe for more. And this is the result that I got. And indeed, the result is extremely good with very realistic look. The analog look and the film grain makes the texture a lot more realistic and the photo looks really nice. You can see a list of photos that were generated with the 2000 analog LoRa model here. And you can see that all these images are super realistic and have the old photo vibe. The trigger word for this LoRa model is v 8 s and here is another generation of a blonde Russian girl holding a pistol. I've also tested out a generation for an orange cat taking a selfie and this result seems to be as good as the Samsung Ultra Real LoRa model. Another great LoRa for the Ultra Real Fine Tune model is this realistic amplifier LoRa and the trigger word for this is Digicam. And you can see that this generation that I created of a Russian girl holding a flower is extremely good. And I also tried generating the same orange cat with the same prompt. The body is a little bit deformed, but with enough number of generations, I think you can get a good images. You could be wondering how you can download the other LoRa models for the Comfy UI Cloud Run Pod. You can go to your pod and you can go to the web terminal section. You want to press connect and open web terminal. You want to download the new models under the workspace slash comfy UI slash models slash LoRa's folder. And you can navigate to different folders by using the CD command. So from the root directory folder, I want to CD workspace slash comfy UI slash models slash LoRa's folder. 
If you press ls, you'll see all the files in the directory. And in here, you can see the three different types of LoRa's that I already downloaded when I loaded up the container. If you want to download a new model from Civit AI page, you want to copy the download link and you can type in wget content-disposition-o dash dash and you want to type in the file name that will be saved to the directory and then paste in the download link by pressing right click and paste. As an example, I'm going to be downloading this Polaroid LoRa model. So I'm going to be replacing this with the file name. And in a similar way, you can also download other models like for example, the control net models or the unit models. If you want to download a model from a hugging face link, instead of using the direct URL address of the model, you can click the copy download link button and use this for the download address. I'm going to copy the download link and use the same command and use the download link as the second argument of the command. In the web terminal, the control V command might not work to paste the download link. So I'm just going to right click and paste the link here. If you want to install a new custom node for your comfy UI run pod container, Navigate to the custom nodes directory from the workspace folder by using the cd commands and then git clone the git URL. For example, I'm downloading the comfy UI pullet node to the custom node folder. One thing to make sure after you're done generating the images, you want to stop the pod and terminate it so that you don't get the ongoing charges. If you stop the pod, you'll only get the charges on the storage fees, which is not that much, but you do want to make sure that you stop the pod so that you don't use the GPUs continuously. If you terminate the pod, all the storages will disappear like your output images. So if you do want to keep the images and you want to maintain the container, you'll have to pay the fee of about 20 cents per day, which is not that much. If you guys have more questions related to RunPod, you can join my Discord channel and ask the questions there. I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration of the workflow to create a very realistic looking images. If you had any other questions, please join my Discord channel and I'll try my best to answer the questions there. Thanks a lot for watching.